Welcome back to The Morning Toast. We are so excited to have fashion designer, icon, and now author, Norma Kamali on the show. Welcome, Norma. Thank you for being here. It's my pleasure. I love being here. We are such big fans. Yeah, Jackie's clothes. hoping you're going to notice that she's wearing I noticed. I saw okay. uh, I love it so much. I have the matching pants too, but you know, my quarantine 15, it just, we're not there it yet. couldn't work today. I know, but the color is great with your hair. It looks thank, really thank good. Thank you so much. Your clothing is everything of the sort. That's a phrase that we love here at the Morning Toast. And so we are so excited to be talking to you and so excited that you have written a book called yes. I Am Invincible. Yes, I have. And um, I'm happy to say um with my 75 years of experience, I decided to put a handbook together. And I wish I had a handbook when I was going through my 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. And, um, and so basically it's really a, a handbook on how to get through the decades, what, uh, what to expect, obviously, uh, 30 is very significant, 20 is significant, 40, you know, you reach a plateau and you monetize where you're at, and then 50 is reinvention. And it and and it's good to have a sense of what that means. So not that you're going to avoid the experience because the experience is the transition that takes you to the next place, but um, but it it helps you keep in mind that you're not the only one that's going through that and that it is part of the evolution of a woman to have those experiences. Now, I'm sure many points in your career, you've been had the opportunity to write a book if you wanted to, because you've been so successful for so long. So why now and why this particular book? Uh, I, I think now, because like I said, purpose is really important. Um, even for you guys, you're young, but having a sense of what your purpose is in this lifetime helps you make decisions that are the right decisions for you. Instead of meandering along and letting life happen, you'll decide on, on important things in your life based on how you see your purpose for this lifetime. So I recognized early on that my purpose was to serve women and to um, share my experiences. So this, especially at this point where I have so much to share, and I also talk about aging with power. When I turned 20, um, my mother said, happy birthday, it's all downhill from here. And I started crying and I said, I don't want to be as old as you are. And I'm like, no, <laughs> and, but we all go through that. We all recognize that we're going to age when we're not teenagers anymore, we're going to start aging. And then everybody thinks of it in such a horrible way and fashion and the beauty media uh, keep telling us about anti-aging, anti-wrinkle, anti-everything that has to do with something that I, quite frankly, am very comfortable with saying I'm 75 and I am 75 and I've written a book. I have furniture line coming out. My scent is coming out in September. I have like a lot of things I'm working on and I'm very inspired. I wouldn't want to be 20 again. I wouldn't want to be 30, 40, 50 ever again. I did that. And so I'm experiencing this part of my life. And if you think about the three pillars of a healthy lifestyle, which are sleep, diet, and exercise, those are the tools that help you get through each of the decades and feel feel good about your age, feel good about your body, feel good about wanting to make love because you feel good in your body. Those are things you should think about every decade. But if you think about it at 75, you can, you can enjoy all kinds of things in life. So you worked on this book for quite a bit. And now that it's out, it's been out for like two weeks. What has the reception been like? Because I'm sure it's pretty personal. And then once you put it out there, having people read it, accept it, reject it, what has the feedback been and how has that been for you? Well, as you know, because you have a book and, and yeah. congrats, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
as you know, it's like giving birth in a way, you know, you work on it, you, you really want it to be quality and you want to feel good about it. You want there to be an experience that people have with it. And it's wonderful when you actually see that what you work so hard on actually is getting that reception. And because the book is really written for, for a 20 year old, because that's when you get the most out of it. When you start and you think about all these things at 20, um, you get that much more out of the, the book and the experience. And then if when you're 30, you read it again. When you're 40, you read it again. Because as you get to that age, you then understand, oh, I see what's happening. I see now what I read when I was 20. Now it's real. Now it's a real thing that's happening. So I see the book having you know just hanging around your house and being there at times where you just pull it and say what the hell's going on like what the fuck i'm i'm feeling you know i'm feeling so shitty like life is passing me by why is that what's going on and um and then you get grounded just by okay i see yeah i still feel like life is passing me by however I understand that I need to reconcile some stuff at this point in my life. So I think the book, um, and, and I'm seeing as I talk to 20 year olds and 30 year olds in different age groups, I have a different conversation with each age group. And I'm, I'm so happy because I think if, if you can take away one nugget of of information that can help you in making decisions about your life. I'm thrilled. I will feel like I did my job with this. Definitely. We're so excited to read the book. Most of our audience are young millennial women. So what advice would you have for them and for us women who are starting out finding our purposes? Yeah. What, what would you say to us? So, so what age are you guys? I'm 28. I'm 26. Okay. So first of all, <clears throat> the twenties are about going out and being on the edge of a cliff all the time. Like Check. Well, <laughs> Check. You gotta talk to Check. her. You gotta talk to her, Norma. She needs good to go to a cliff. <laughs> she no, but she is on a cliff. It's a different cliff than you're on. It's That's true. Different. Thank you, Norm. <laughs> <laughs> so but, but this is when you, you know, you get objectified by some guy that you thought was, you know, the perfect guy for you or girl or whoever partner for you. Um, it's when you really make some embarrassing, horrific mistakes. It's when- Check. You, it, no, but you're supposed to. This is when you're supposed to. Uh, and you just have to stay on the cliff, not go off the cliff. Oh, so that's the, that's the, <laughs> but, but, but if you go off the cliff and get up again, that's even better. But the, the point being that you learn about yourself in your twenties, you learn about um, your relationship with, um, with other people, with friends, with dates, with, relationships with your body with your with your whole sense of self and that is critical and it's an important experience so having a lot of new experiences in your 20s is really important and unfortunately with covid when you're in lockdown it is the worst time and i feel i really feel like you have to make up for this that you can't Yes, life just passed you by for a year and, and it, it sucks. And I, I, I feel that you, you have to really live life double time when this is over. And, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. There is, there is so much you have to experience before you hit 30 and, and don't miss out. So I think if you and your listeners really keep that in mind that you need to interact with each other a lot 
do less technology and more touching and interacting physically with each other. And I'm talking about about hugging and girlfriends hanging all over each other and brushing each other's hair and touching boys that you don't even love, but you just, just having, no, I'm very serious, but really having that in the seventies, we did that. We just touched each other a lot. We were hugging and kissing each other a lot. We didn't have technology. It didn't interfere with that. And having when you feel through your body, through your hand, when you touch a guy's face that you may not be in love with, but you just feel empathy or sympathetic, or you feel something for him and he feels your hand on his face or even a girlfriend, or, but that is so dynamic. You feel it, it affects how you feel about things and about this human being, and he or she feels some experience from that too. Don't give that up. You force that to happen because you're all missing out on that. And you're, you're starting relationships on technology, ending them on technology, and to really appreciate sex, you need more simple touching and you want to really learn more and more about appreciating sex and your body and what your body feels and what somebody else feels. And sometimes just having those interactions where it's not love, it's not, I got to marry this person, but just sometimes the simple massage is as good as an orgasm if it's the right experience. So I recommend just saying, for your for 20 to 30 when this is over i don't want to like be responsible for orgies <laughs> and all kinds of happening but but i do really i do ask you to experiment with having picnics in the park or like getting some wine and or grass or whatever it is you want to do and just like just hang out with each other and lie down and touch and sing and just be with each other without the technology. Get a basket and say, okay, this is just about us touching and talking, telling our most intimate secrets, really digging deep into the emotion and the physical. And I think you need to, to do it big time, especially after COVID. And I think once you start having those experiences, they're very addictive and you're not want to, you, you won't want to give them up. You really yeah. want, you want to do more of it. Definitely. I think people are maxed out on technology this year yeah. and looking forward to experiencing new sensations once we can. Right. Once we can. So I think that's really good advice. I think that's wonderful advice. I feel like very inspired Me to, too. to double down on living <laughs> like once we can. Let's go to Vegas. I was ready to just like wash, just like call this year a wash. Like right. just, but no, we have to make up for this year. I think that's great advice to give all of our listeners. Yeah. Um, before we let you go, we wanted to get your temperature on, you know, the happenings in the fashion world. I feel like COVID has definitely been, uh, put everyone on pause in their fashionable, you know, best. Attire, yes. um, just really, you know, walking the earth in leggings <laughs> and sweatpants and our own merchandise, shopmorningtoast.com. So <laughs> what, what are you seeing now? Like this loungewear, does it, like, I feel like a lot of people don't like it. Are you into the loungewear, you know, the comfortable elegance? Well, you know, to me, Everything I do has to be comfortable. If I make an evening gown, you could, you should be able to go swimming in it. I <laughs> like for me, it has to. I'm, I, I'm a big, very physical, active person. So nothing gets dry cleaned. I don't believe in, you know, it's like a pet that you keep feeding. Why should you have a piece of clothing that you have to keep dry cleaning? Like that jacket you have on, you can wash. So oh. yes. So, so for me, it's, it's always about feeling good in clothes that they should make you happy. You should feel great in them. You should walk a certain way in them because you feel that way, but they also have to be super comfortable. So all of my clothes, no matter how extreme they are, they're not, they're not meant to be precious. 
So the, the comfort part of it is fine. But I think there's a good question about what's happening with fashion and the fashion industry. So all of us have an imprint in our brain that's never gonna go away. It's the COVID imprint. We will remember this. You will be 95 and say, remember when, and it will be a real memory and it will impact a lot of your decisions about a lot of things. And one of the things we've all experienced is either you're not wearing shoes, you're wearing slides, you're wearing sneakers, you're like, I visit my shoes. I love my shoes. I've collected shoes since the 60s and I take care of them and I wear them. And now I look at them and I say, girls, you're all gorgeous. I think you're fabulous, but I'm not that quick to put you on my feet because I am, my feet are in such good shape now because they haven't been squashed in pointy shoes. They're like, yeah. They're really good. I mean, I could use a good pedicure, but they're in good shape. They're, they're basically in good shape. And I feel so comfortable that I think shoes will be very different. And the kinds of shoes we wear at different times are going to be very different. And I think there's an evolution there. The other evolution I feel is that in the 70s, New York City was bankrupt. It was a dangerous city. People were leaving it by the droves. Uh, people, there weren't enough people who had money to pay taxes because they all left. The services in the city fell apart. There were strikes. There was violence. There was danger. And it sounds a little bit like, like something we might know right now, a little bit. Yeah. And so as a result, the city became incredibly affordable for young creative types who said, you know what, we'll be fine. We'll deal with the violence. We'll deal with all of this. Mm -hmm. And there was a creative culture that started. And New York City in the 70s probably was one of the most creative times for the country and affected the world. And that's when the fashion industry, the American fashion industry really began where Halston, Calvin, Ralph, everybody started labels. And I had, I was in a big push in the beginning of my career too. And the creativity was extraordinary. And it was a time where nobody wanted to look anything like anybody else. The last thing in the world you would want is to have the same bracelet, the same dress, the same shoes, anything. But you would find these one of a kind special pieces and you'd mix it up in your wardrobe. You would look, you would do everything to create sort of this piece of art that you were every time you dressed. And the more different you looked from everyone, the, the more you were expressing yourself like a piece of art. So millennials don't really think that way. Millennials have a different mindset about fashion completely. So it's not gonna be an easy, it, that's not a natural thing for you to do. But what I do think you guys will be doing is you will be thinking more about sustainability and the quality of what you're buying and the longevity of it in your wardrobe, especially as you get towards 30. And then I want to say one thing about 30. 30 is huge. 30 is one of the biggest transitions of all the decades. It's a hard one. It's a little bit of a slap in the face and an awakening. And you will shed some tears on your pillow. Oh no, well, that's me. So yep. <laughs> and that's okay. That's okay. Because everybody is going through that, but everybody has a different timeline. So I'm, I, I found my soulmate at 65. Wow. And in 1970, when I was 25, 
an astrologer told me that I would meet my soulmate when I was 65 and I wanted to have her killed, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I would too. I would yeah, too. like, I'm sorry, you cannot be right. And unfortunately, she was right. I met guys, I dated them, but you know, as I look back, they weren't exactly, you know, people that you would want to spend your life with. Right. So everybody has a different timeline. I'm not saying your timeline is 65, but don't, don't let this chronological, mystical timeline that was developed century, I mean, millennials ago be the timeline for you it is not your milestone it's somebody else's milestone so you have to be sure that you attract the man or the woman or the person you deserve and nothing less than that and so you have to work on yourself to make sure that you love yourself and you have self-respect so you draw that to you and you have to be sure that it is that person. And you can have a good time in the process. It doesn't mean you can't meet people and do things, but don't, don't be frightened by 31 when you all of a sudden are at, you're in the age group where you're aged out of the dating market because you're not. That's, you know, maybe on certain dating apps you are, but you're not. And yeah. so, but getting through, th the way you get through 30 will define how you get through all of these transitions for the rest of your life. And, and it's this really good advice, honestly. It's and big. That's it's something a lot of people needed to hear, myself included. So thank you so much. And really, thank you for being here. Congratulations on your book. Everyone go pick it up anywhere you get books. It's called I Am Invincible. Thank you for being here. It was honestly a huge honor to speak to you. And thank oh, you guys pleasure. for listening. And we will see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.